Yeah, welcome and thanks for the kind introduction. Um, my name is Sebastian. I got introduced already. Um, so yeah, but today actually I don't want to talk about any individual projects because I'm talking about a problem that I think is bigger than any individual you know, project that we're seeing here. And before I get there, I want to dive in how we come here. So a long, long time ago, you know, um, in days so old that Ethereum had a vision, a vision was stated on the launch day website of ethereum.org on July 30, 2015. And that read, what is Ethereum? Ethereum is a decentralized platform that runs smart contracts, applications that run exactly as programmed without any possibility of downtime, censorship, fraud, or third-party interference. Ethereum is how the internet was supposed to work. On the page, you found how to, for the very first time in human history, actually do you know, fair voting you dig deeper, you found out how to launch your shitcoin without running a network. That was neat. Somebody came up with a horrible standard and called it ERC-20, and yet people were building like really cool interfaces on top of it. The birth of DeFi. Well, the birth of DeFi and this DEX had a bit of problem that, you know, if you look in the order book, only one person can basically buy the top of book, right? You wouldn't know who in the block actually got that. That's not great. Luckily, a young man came up with an idea, and another even younger man wrote a blog about it. And his blog can be summarized in exactly five characters. X times Y equals K. I think the most iconic equation of our times. And DEXs were born, right? And um, along came a third young man who at the time didn't even have a job or knew how to code, and coded up that idea and called it Uniswap. Now, if you use Uniswap, you might have seen the settings thing, you might have not seen it. There's something called slippage that fixes the issue I talked about earlier of not you know, taking this exact order only. Fast forward to last night, there was some fellow who was again trading a shit token because that's what people do, 15K worth of shit coins for like 13.5K worth of ETH. Weird, what's that difference? Slippage? Of course not. Right? So that's a sandwich attack. That fellow got sandwiched by a sophisticated front run and back run here. How was that possible? Well, of course it's possible thanks to a highly sophisticated, you know, user screwing infrastructure. It's also called MEV. That was built to democratize access and make things fairer for the user by leveling the playing field and bringing many players into the field. So let's zoom into that. Let's zoom into this builder section down here and let's see how that democratization is going. Well, today we see that there's exactly two remaining, right? So um, that's Titan and Beaver. Congrats on democratization going well. And I think that is broken, right? That is broken. That is not how Ethereum was supposed to work. So an updated version of what is Ethereum 2014. Ethereum 24 edition, Ethereum is a platform that runs smart financial casino contracts, applications that usually run exactly as paid without any possibility of downtime. And yes, it actually once set third-party interference. Funny, right? Ethereum is Bernie Madoff's wet dream. And that is broken. And that's why I'm here to talk about and that's what I'm standing up for, because that is not the Ethereum that I came here for. It is about them versus us. They want faster blocks, obviously, right? You can trade faster, you can make more money quicker. We want resilience via privacy and decentralization. And it is unfortunately at odds. Why is that at odds? Well, because physics. Because it takes a few hundred milliseconds to have a round trip of ping across our you know, not so tiny planet. And if you want privacy infrastructure, like Mixnets that we build at Hopper or DVT that other people build, you have a bunch more of those, right? So things are not as fast, and that's why that's an actual problem. Now, they invest in restaking RWAs and rehypothecation. We empower the individual on the world computer. These two things have to share the same ledger and have the same infrastructure to share. 
They write checks, cypherpunks write code. They are here for the profits. We are here for positive human interactions and experience in the infinite garden. If you are here for profits, you are part of the problem. You are contributing to a system that is corrupting the underpinnings of the world computer that cypherpunks want to build really great stuff on. Let's fix that. Let's be conscious about that and let's try to build an Ethereum that goes back to the roots of where it started in order to bring us the infrastructure that empowers the individual and not the trader. Thank you so much. Thank you. Right, so now is your opportunity to ask some questions. Uh, please raise your hand if you have any question. About the censorship resistance, there are still node operators that uh, make vanilla blocks. So how does that uh, compare to what you said? So yeah, I mean, uh, there are still some node producers that produce blocks, but that's not enough. 80% of the blocks that are showed are subject to that, right? And that's not great, right? So increasingly, even individuals are subscribing to the big builders, and that corrupts the infrastructure. For example, it's not just the L1 with based rollups that directly translates to corrupting the L2s, right? So we need neutrality of the L1. Hi, thanks for the talk. So you showed the website back in 2015 and 16, and I think one of the big things that changed was the DAO hard fork, and that split the community uh, to some extent, but also kind of filtered away some of the cypherpunk philosophy. Uh, so why don't people just, the cypherpunks, why don't they just use Ethereum Classic? Sorry, why don't they just choose Ethereum Classic? Great. Um, well, I, I think we've seen the attackability of that, right? So cypherpunks still deserve security, and cypherpunks still deserve security that they don't get on a chain that could, you know, any time of the day just get forked away under their feet. Uh, that's not great. So I think cypherpunks deserve ultimate resilience more so than the profit maxiteers because they can still go to Binance. If you want to make money, Binance is great technology, right? Please do trade on Binance. Well, actually, that was the last question. Thank you so much. Uh, please give some applause to Sebastian.